Hey everyone, it's Jen with Triumphant Tuesdays, and I'm sorry uh, about not getting a video up on Saturday. I was having a hard day, and also I had a scheduled conflict, so it made it difficult for me to carve out the time to make a video. Um, but yeah, so I'm sorry about that. But Saturday this week, I'll have a video up, and for now, um, I'm your Tuesday girl, so new for me. Um, kind of cool. Triumphant. It's pretty triumphant. So before I start this video, I want to let you know that I'm wearing a sun. I have a sun on my sweater. Um, it's kind of awesome and it makes me feel good and it should make you feel good too. I hope it makes you, when you feel bad, you should think of Mr. Sun and you feel better. Okay, moving on. Um, so this week we're talking about eating disorders and personality disorders. Um, this is something that I can talk about forever, and I hope that you'll join me. Um, I'm going to really stick to talking about borderline personality disorder. This is something that I was diagnosed with um, in 2002. So um, the jury's out on whether the diagnosis was officially correct, but it probably was. And even if it wasn't, I have plenty of characteristics. Um, keep me going so um, yeah to continue to work with that is to deal with um, it's basically you know what like it it really ties so much into the eating disorder um, for me it came first obviously and I think a lot of the characteristics were like the perfect setup to develop an eating disorder um, because it like really overlaps a lot of the characteristics overlap um, I'll just start by talking about the all or nothing black and black and white thinking um, that you know feeling like you're either like or, or actually or feel okay like in terms of other people thinking that other people are either like amazing or terrible and you can think that about yourself too so like if you think that if you can take there's something called generalization in dialectical behavioral therapy and it's when you take um, when you take like one quality about a person or like one trait and use that to define the whole person um, which can be really dangerous so like if they have one kind of endearing or a positive quality that you see th as positive, then all of a sudden you just idealize them. You can talk about them forever. You admire them. You love them. You get attached to them. Um, and then you have a fear of them abandoning you, like that whole thing. So that can become really dangerous because then you can interpret any of their actions as abandonment when they're not. So you basically like you can hang on to people's every words like when you have this um, like because it's a fear of being empty like it's a fear of of like yourself being empty I think that's what it's been for me like I have had this in inherent sense of being empty of not really having a core self of needing other people to fulfill myself and to identify myself and to kind of like validate that I am a person and that I have value um, and that like that can and so that can be reflected in, in the way you see other people that can make it really easy to idealize other people because then you you just want this person to basically like save you and you need them to be perfect and if they show a slight fault all of a sudden that's a risk to your um, it's just a risk to your well-being like it's a risk to how you like it's to your safety really like because you're constantly judging constantly gauging your own your own sense of safety your own sense of identity on other people so I totally did a tangent um, <laughs> So you can see that person as having like one in good thing and all of a sudden they're all good. Everything about them is amazing. Um, on the flip side, you can see them, same person or a different person or yourself as having one not so good thing 
one flaw and then generalize that and make the person out to be bad and this can happen with the same person like throughout a given day I mean it doesn't even have to be separate people although it could um, I think that partly the, I think the way this can kind of cross over into eating disorders is that we in eating disorder world need the external markers and the external reinforcers to keep us going to keep our behaviors like secure and um, keep us feeling like what we're doing is giving us value is attributing some kind of status to us some kind of identity so when somebody makes a comment you know we feed into that because we need that um, even if we don't show it you know even if we don't show that we're like getting a fix off of their comment that that's just I mean when you're borderline you often don't show reactions the way you're feeling them but it doesn't mean that they're not there and that you're not using them for ill um, so you know with eating disorders like even if it's not another person that you're needing that from so much it could be the scale it could be the mirror it could be clothing sizes because the basic point of it is that you can't trust yourself you cannot tr you have no internal trust so it it always has to come from outside of you there is no sense of reality coming from inside of you once you have an eating disorder and um, same thing with borderline like there is no internal sense of I am I feel this I think this way um, yeah so so you need that reflector you need that marker um, to ensure that you do indeed exist and have worth um, the problem is is that just like with eating disorders it's very flimsy because somebody can make you happy by recognizing something good in you but a second later if they say something that you misinterpret as bad um, or even if it is like they're pointing out a flaw but they certainly don't mean to say you know you're a bad person you know well you're gonna take it that way and then it undoes everything good they said so yeah um, it's really really dangerous um, you know I think that for me I think the the borderline stuff like you know needing to feel like I had something like I was something um, contributed to the development of an eating disorder so um, some people develop those things once they have an eating disorder so it, it's solely based on the ED and once the eating disorder goes away it goes away you know once they recover um, that other stuff can go be okay because it was it was solely induced by the state you know of the eating disorder um, but no I mean when the eating disorder when you recover and you have those borderline tendencies or borderline personality disorder um, that stuff is probably still going to be there you just you know it'll manifest differently you know, eating disorders make it really easy to channel all of that hectic craziness into food. Um, it's it does it's that control. It lets you have one channel for it because otherwise you can feel like you're bouncing around everywhere. So if you just you your life s stops feeling like this thundery roller coaster, um, whatever. Um, if you just have a single channel a single narrow focus tunnel vision you know it's food and you're gonna feel those terrible feelings you know but it's all gonna be related to food and then it, it can all be fixed by food so you don't have to depend on anyone to like like if you if there if you need to fix it you'll fix it like it's more in your hands you'll still need that external validation and it might come in the form of a scale or it might come in the form of a comment but you know um, and the, there still won't be that internal trust but at least you can use all of those issues you can channel them and you can just put them into one little 
one little line of thinking and it doesn't make it any better but it makes it seemingly more manageable um and um yeah i mean that's that is a lot of what i went through um what else i think i think um i think if you're dealing with somebody who is um who is going through the borderline and eating disorder um you need to be really careful with your sense of um with your with your placement of boundaries um boundaries first of all um don't i I read some of this in a book today i should i'll link to it um don't assume that just because the person is not acting exactly the way they're feeling or not or or think or like giving off the impression that they're fine um you know what like yeah because that person can be extremely depressed and extremely impulsive and around you they might legitimately feel okay but when they're like if they isolate which they probably do they will go back to feeling the like the way the horrible horrible feelings that they were feeling before so you know don't see like if you if there's something about their behavior that ends up surprising you like impulsivity happens yeah in both eating disorders and borderline for example the impulsivity is huge it's it's the desperation it's that feeling of i just want to change this feeling right now i just want to stop it right now and that no matter what it takes like and i can't see tomorrow that's the other thing not being able to see past this very moment thinking this feeling is going to last forever so you just want that to end so with eating disorders like maybe you're full you can't stand it you can't tolerate it so you purge um with borderline you can't tolerate the sadness you can't tolerate whatever mood the anger whatever so you self-injure you whatever it is and you run away you threaten to hurt yourself i don't know i've that's i've never done that but i've i've known people who have um all of those things like if you're on the receiving end of that understand that that person isn't trying to get attention they're not trying to manipulate you consciously um they just don't know how else they just don't think there's another option they just can't see out of their little bubble and they think that 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 what appears to be manipulation you know that is the answer um they they've hit a wall and you're you're on the the other side you're in like on you're the only thing between them and that wall so they really don't know what else to do however it's not good to reinforce their behavior that you they do have to be shown that it this is not going to lead to a good place this is not okay so maybe they don't have that internal insight to know that it's you know comes across as manipulation or things like that but it's they have to be shown they need eating disorders borderline to that that it's not okay and it's not going to reinf- it's not going to get them what they want so really boundaries um you ha- need to practice boundaries with people who are borderline and people who have eating disorders and so even more so with people who have both at the same time you do need to validate those people because what they're feeling is real they've grown up you know borderline especially have grown up feeling for some reason the way they were raised some reason that their feelings don't count they're not valid you know so yeah they need to be shown that their feelings are valid um and then they need those boundaries so yeah but but um for the people who are experiencing this the the actual people the borderlines eating disorder people um you need to practice boundaries as well and try to be aware of the effect that you know not it of the relationships and the way the relationships are playing out um and the way that the people are playing into them and the way that you're playing into it back. So this has been mostly about just the way it kind of works. Um solutions not as much. So I'm sorry about that, but I got really carried away. Um I'll list some links below, so take care. Bye.